On today's Top Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how you can take a cached particle simulation and then how we can duplicate that and copy it and populate our scenes. The copies can be offset with their animation, they can be resized, they can be rotated. It's a really versatile technique to fill out background elements in scenes. So let's get started. In our scene, we have one X particles emitter with a Nexus Turbulence object, and it's giving us this nice Voronoi simulation. You can dig into the scene file to see how this was set up. Right, what we're going to do is cache this one emitter then, and then make loads of duplicates of that that just reference one cache, but they'll all look different and there'll be lots of nice variation. Let's go to Insidium X particles cache. We'll leave this in the default settings. We're caching these to external files. Uh, my folder is just in my documents folder here. We're compressing the cache on build. So let's just hit build cache. Now this is a 2000 frame scene. So loads of frames to cache. But this is just going to take, look, just under a minute and a half. So I'll pause it here and come back to you when that is finished. Okay, so that's finished and it just took, as we expected, look, 1 minute and 26 seconds and now we have this full 2,000 frames cached in our viewport and we can scrub backwards and forwards. Okay, so now that we have got that, let's say that we uh, inherit a scene from a different department and we need to drop in our emitter as part of that scene. The issue that we have when this emitter is cached is that if we take the emitter look and we move it over here in our scene, and then we hit play, it's cached in that original position and it hasn't moved. But we are able to move it. Here's how we do it simply. Let's go to the cache object and there is a playback tab. Let's click on this playback tab and we're able to activate local coordinates. So if we do that, let's click on local coordinates, hit play, and now wherever that emitter is, that is where the cache will be played from. So we can move that around, which is really handy. Here's something really cool as well, though. Now that we have all, the, all of this set up, if we go and change the mode in Cinema 4D from Model to Object Mode, and I hit T for the Scale tool, look, I can scale up this cache. Let's hit Play. We can scale it up, scale it down. You can even scale it so it's not evenly scaled on each axis. Look, if we put our Y, we can make it really thin. And we can make all of these different adjustments. So that is pretty cool and gives you lots of versatility. So let's start making some copies of this one emitter. If we go to our emitter now, hold control and drag a copy... Everything works apart from, look, our cache tag is green, which signifies it isn't hooked up to any cache data. So that isn't going to work for us. But we can. Let's just delete that new emitter. We can create a new emitter and have it reference the original cache data. And it's really easy to do. All we need to do is go to our tag and we need to go to the copy tag data. Make sure that's clicked on. Now when we copy this emitter... The tag is red, so both of these emitters are both referencing that one bit of cached sequence uh, that's in our object. So if I take this new one, hit E, and move it here, now we have two emitters referencing the same cache. Now obviously they look identical, don't they, which isn't great. So what would be good is if we could have one of these cache objects start a little bit of later down that cached sequence and we can do that so what we're going to do is this instead of controlling everything in our cache object playback this is where we activated local coordinates and look i can offset when that sequence starts but if i do that in the cache object it'll offset it the same for each emitter which is not what we want we want these emitters to start playing that cache at different points so instead of doing these playback options via the cache object, we can do it via the tag itself. So let's go to our first tag. And look, we can override the cache object settings. We definitely want to have local coordinates active. But then we can offset our first emitter by, say, 50 frames. And you can see it's changed. So this one is starting 50 frames on into that sim. 
cool let's go 100 so the plume is fully developed as the scene starts yep good now let's go into our next emitter tag again we'll override local coordinates and we will put our offset on say 200 frames and now we've got two emitters referencing the same tag the same cache data but they look different because we've offset those and we can multiply these and populate kind of backgrounds of scenes just with one bit of cache data cool so let's take this one hit t scale it down just a little bit so it's going to look different and then i'm going to go on to this control make another copy this one let's move it down hit play and then we need to obviously offset this new one a bit differently let's offset this at 250 and let's maybe hit r for rotate spin it around a bit if we haven't got kind of a directional force or wind we can spin them round to get more variation and then let's hit t and scale that one down a little bit something like that and so obviously you can just keep making as many copies as you like moving them around in your scene scaling them adjusting the offset and we've got all of these different assets all referencing one cache and gives you ultimate flexibility and loads of control to populate scenes really good for background elements